earlier this week, I was in San Antonio, Texas, where we opened our exhibition behind the camera at the beautiful McNay Museum of Art. And those of you who saw behind the camera here remember it was an exhibition about the process of making a picture and how Norman Rockwell used photography and models and created reference photographs of models posing, expressing emotion, uh, action, and used these tools to put together his brilliant paintings. And we had about uh, 600 people at the opening on Tuesday night, and the comment I heard over and over and over again was, why didn't I know this aspect about Norman Rockwell? Why didn't I ever see these photographs before? And that's because we've been processing them in the archive here that we take care of at the museum and have been digitizing that collection in order to make this these working tools and process available to people all over the world. It's, uh, you can visit it on our website and see our digital collection. Well, this exhibition tonight uh, is also about the process of making a film. It's about storytelling. It's about the leading edge, uh, first production of a full uh, feature length animated film, but it's also about how the tools that the illustrators used in creating their storyboards and their settings, and particularly the motion of the characters that had to perform, that were turned into um, the animated, more cartoon-like characters, but it was necessary to use live models and human beings to create the motion and bring the film to life. So we have with us uh, a legend in her own right uh, as a dancer, a choreographer, uh, someone so very special with the talents in her own life, but she was essential and integral to the making of this film. Those of us who live here in the Berkshires know Marge Champion as our friend and neighbor and the great icon of Jacob's Pillow Dance Festival, and I'd like to thank Owen Nort uh, Norton Owen for being here tonight uh, in honor of Marge. When Marge was just 14 years old, she was filmed for the reference of Disney animators serving as a model for the heroine in the following films, not only Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but The Blue Fairy and Pinocchio, uh, The Hyacinth Hippo in The Dance of the Hours, <laughs> segment of Fantasia, uh, and she also helped to choreograph an elaborate parody of a bal Balanchine ballet danced by Verna Zorina in the Goldwyn Follies. She recalls also doing some modeling for Mr. Stork in Dumbo. So I, I think about this at the age of 14. Uh, Marge became a good friend of Diane Disney Miller, Walt Disney's daughter. They're fast friends today and Diane was so sorry she couldn't be here for the opening. Her grandson is graduating and family first, uh, but she is on the National Council of the Norman Rockwell Museum and we're so grateful to her for the collaboration we've been able to create between our museums on the East Coast and the West Coast uh, in celebration of um, this art form. Uh, We'll, we'll hear from Marge her historic role in developing, aiding the development of the animated feature films. And you can actually see footage of her choreography, dancing in some of the uh, motion action in the, in the exhibition behind you. So please join me now in a warm welcome to Marge Champion, who will share her personal story in helping to make the classic film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and her memories of Uncle Walt. Well, it's so nice to see all of you here. And also, I need to tell you that this is my father, Ernest Belcher, 131st birthday, June the 8th. So he had quite a, quite a, because he trained me. He trained me not only as a dancer, but also he trained me because he was British. He, he t uh, trained me in the way that he approved of young girls at that time behaving. 
And I think that was uh, one of the key reasons why, well, I'll tell you what that meant. When, uh, when I wanted to, uh, uh, when somebody said to me, uh, oh, how do you do? I was not allowed to say, I'm fine, thank you. I had to say, nicely, thank you, and curtsy, <laughs> and, say, and, and say that. And I had to pick up my dress, so I knew how to do that. And I also knew how to, at the, at the table, when I was, uh, wanted to be excused, I, I had to say, I've had an elegant sufficiency. <laughs> May I be excused? <laughs> and he preferred me to curtsy too. So you can see that that really, besides the dance training, which was very rigorous, and uh, he, uh, from the time I was about six years old, I also did the teacher's course. And then when the Depression came along, C.B. DeMille built the built building that he had on uh, in, in Los Angeles. It was on Western Avenue, right near uh, Wilshire Boulevard. And so after school, I would get, in my, uh, get on the bus. We had buses in those days. And I'd get on the uh, double-decker bus on Sunset, go down, go down Western Avenue in a covered bus, and start to either take my lessons or when I got to be 15, I could uh, actually have been, I think, uh, three or four years in the teacher's course that he had every, every summer. And uh, lots of teachers from all over the country came to study with him. It was an amazing upbringing. And I was very prepared when they came to, uh, they, the, there was a scout came from the studio uh, uh, to pick out somebody to audition for, uh, uh, for Snow White. We didn't really know very much about it then, but we did know that Mr. Disney had a great love of dance. Mickey and Minnie danced, and uh, the Three Little Pigs danced, and uh, uh, the Silly Symphonies uh, were absolutely beautiful. I was even allowed to go with him uh, to the, um, when I was very young, to the Oriental Theater on Sunset Boulevard and see the, the uh, pre-things that we didn't, my brother and I did not see uh, a feature-length picture until he was old enough to understand it. And we were 20 months apart, and I was the older sister. But I did get to see the silly symphonies and all those beautiful things that they could have continued to do, except that they cost so much money that he had to consider the idea of really doing a full-length movie, which at the studio, after I got there and, and got to be comfortable, I'll tell you about that in a minute. In a minute. But uh, it, it, it was uh, too expensive to produce these for the amount of money that they were paid to show them. Is that not true? These ladies know more than I do, because they, they are, I, I just remember what happened when I was 14 and 13. I did, I did uh, audition when I was 13, in March, I think, and then I didn't hear from them all summer long. I graduated from Bancroft Junior High School, went to Hollywood High School, and suddenly there was a call to my father, not to me. I was 14, uh, September 2nd. You will know that uh, obviously I was not, this was 1933 or two, whatever it was, and uh, so I can't ever hide how old I am, <laughs> nor do I want to, but it was, it was, uh, you know, I'm 93, really three months from 94. So that.
And if you really want to know, the secret is keep dancing. No, <laughs> no matter how slow, no matter how, just keep dancing, <laughs> which we will do tonight. <laughs> anyway, uh, so my father took me out to the studio, and I uh, was measured for a dress, which much later on, I saw in the Disney archives, not, I don't think they're in the family museum, it was the top of the dress. And it was about, uh, I think it was when the Blu-ray, they sent me over to London to, uh, when the Blu-ray uh, was, and uh, they, uh, so I was out there at the studio also and they showed me this, uh, the top of my dress that I wore. And I looked at the back, and there were two rows of hooks and eyes, which meant that somebody else had worn that dress. <laughs> and I have a feeling that she didn't know how to curtly, curtsy and say nicely, <laughs> thank you. My father had a great, great, uh, he really taught me, and uh, I am ever grateful to him. And so I celebrate his birthday and Uncle Walt's birthday. I'm sure they're up there dancing together somewhere. So uh, it is with great pleasure that I come to the, since I came to Stockbridge in 1979, I think. And I, uh, I had a house here which I fortunately sold about six and a half years ago. So now I live in the barn, which is a twin one to the one I gave to Jacob's Pillow before I moved out of that house. And I feel like this is also my chosen home. And it's New England. So what could be better than to celebrate this, this show from Diane Disney Miller, who I think was four years old, was she not, when the picture was released? So she's a good deal younger than I am, and she doesn't have, I don't know how she does it with seven children. But whatever it is, we are really respectful, and I called him Uncle Walt. He told me to call him Uncle Walt because I was too young to call him Walt. Everybody else in the studio called him Walt. But uh, he was always very protective of me and uh, I didn't see a great deal of him before the picture was uh, released because he not only was busy working on all kinds of projects, but uh, he also was going to uh, San Francisco, where the family museum is now, uh, with his brother to try to raise the last million dollars that they needed. I'm glad you're shaking your head because that much I just heard. I didn't know for sure. And so I thank you so much, and I thank Diane so much. I hope to see her this summer sometime. and. Uh, Certainly, Laurie and the museum, which has become part of my whole life here. Thank you all. <laughs>